How's it going everybody? It's your boy Baby Hamster here. And I realized how much of a mess and how disorganized my yester or yesterday's video was. So I just wanted to go back over everything and go back through it to just do a better tutorial. Um, because a lot of people were still confused um, after everything. So I just want to go back through it and just really make sure that everything is super clear. All the links for everything will be down in the description. So make sure to check that if you're looking for a link to something. The very first step that we're going to start out with is actually installing Ultralytics. This will give you the YOLO command and command line. You'll also need to install Python. Um, you can install the latest version. Uh, I think currently I have uh, 3.10 installed, this one. Uh, but you can install the newest one. It should work just fine as well for it. Um, once Python is installed, make sure you add it to the path uh, as you're installing. Once that's all installed, you want to go to the Ultralytics GitHub. And then we'll actually go down to pip install Ultralytics. And we'll copy that. Uh, we're then going to open up a command line and we're just going to type that in. So it already installed super fast for me because I already have it installed. So once you have it installed, they have some usage um, where you can look through and kind of see the usage of it. Um, also on their website, they have a CLI document where it kind of tells you the different uh, things that you can do with YOLO. So you can do train, predict, validate, export. They also have some special configs here. Um, and then it goes more into depth on some of the things that you can do on here and then of course the different formats that you can export it to as well so once you get that installed like i said you can check out the cli docs if you would like as well um, just for some more information we then want to actually set up the folder structure and the yaml config uh, it's super simple we'll just create a folder um, I'm just going to actually create it here at the top. And we're, I'm just going to call it YOLO V8 new. And inside this folder, I'm going to create a image data folder, or I could call it um, something like this. Oop, did not mean to that there and then underneath this folder you actually want to create two more folders and each folder will have two more folders so we want to create an images and a labels folder like so and then under each one of these we'll have a train and a validation folder and i'm just going to copy these over to the labels folder so now that we got our folder structure created, we'll actually need to create the uh, YAML uh, as, as well. And this is just a config to let YOLO know where certain data sets are and how to do certain things. Um, and this is the default from YOLO v5. I just reused it for YOLO v8. Um, so I am running yellow v8, but I'm using the yellow v5 config. There is a default one, but it has a lot more parameters on their GitHub. Uh, you can use this one and just kind of cut it down or adjust it as needed. Um, but I'm going to stick with the other one because it's just a lot more simple. And I'm, I'm just going to do a quick run over here. So we have our paths. So we'll need to adjust these to our new paths that we just created. So we'll go in and we'll go to our image train. Replace that. And the same thing here, except for we're not doing train, we're just doing validation. And then we only have one class and that's enemy. And I'll try to link this on pastebin or some other uh, config like that. Uh, I'll try to link it somewhere to where you guys can see it down in the description. Um, and you could just copy and paste it in your own file. Uh, once that's set up, you really have everything structured the way you need. Um, we have two commands. 
one for training and one for exporting. Like I said, those are on the CLI documentation on YOLO, but I also have some examples not here, sorry, here. And we can do a quick run over of this as well. So we're running the YOLO command from Ultralytics. We're, our task is to detect. We want to detect certain items. The mode is training because we're wanting to train a new model. The image size is 640 by 640, and that's what we're uh, inputting into the AI. That's a good, healthy, medium size. It's not too small, so it isn't super pixely. Uh, so the AI can actually see further distances without it getting kind of blurry. Um, the data is the actual character path. Um, if, if we're going to run this command, we actually have to be CD'd into this kind of like so so I just typed in CD space and then the path and then we could run this command and it would use this path of course that's the universal one so we'd want to adjust that to match uh, epochs is how many loops so it, currently I have it set for a thousand loops typically it doesn't go that long it goes about 300 loops 350 loops for me most of the time with my data um, but I set it for a thousand just in case it goes that far. The batch size is a pretty much a count of how many models it's training all at once. So it's training 16 models. It's going to pick out the very best model from that 16 batch and then run to the next epoch, uh, which will be the next loop. And it'll do the same thing again. It'll run 16 models. It'll pick out the very best one and then go to the next epoch. And it'll keep doing that. As it improves and, it, and once it starts or once it stops improving it will actually uh, run on a thing called patience so currently I think the default is a hundred uh, you can set it down to like 30 or 40 if you'd like uh, it's just another parameter that you would add you just type in patience equals a number and again that's in the CLI documents as well but that prevents you running a training that just keeps going on and on and on uh, the other command here is, and, and like I said, we'll, we'll do a little bit more testing once uh, we get some image data. The export is just how to export the model into a different format. Um, this is the Onyx format, which is what I use. Uh, and you just need to point it to a model file and then obviously export it. I can show you an example of that here real quick. I'm just going to pull one from my other runs. And it's just best PT. We just run the command. And voila, it's done. So now we have a best Onyx, and this can actually be put right into Amy to be used. So that's kind of a breakdown of how to install Ultralytics, how to set up the folder structure, and how to kind of run the commands to actually get going uh, with your training and your exporting to Onyx. The next step is to actually gather images. Uh, we need to gather images to label and actually train our model because right now we have the basis of a model without any training data at all. Um, so we need to gather some so we can start making our own model. Uh, or we need to gather some and if you want to send it to us and have us train it on our universal model, we'll gladly do that for the games that we're accepting. So you really want to use Amy to gather your images. Uh, Amy is uh, already built to gather images for you. It auto gathers them at 640 by 640 and it outputs them to our uh, bin folder here. So we got bin images and it outputs them into here. Uh, you can just open up Amy. You'll need to either enable the aim aligner or the auto trigger. And we'll actually need to select a model too. And then if you don't want it aiming while you're playing, just bring this up to 100%. And then you also want to collect data while playing. And then we'll enable the aim aligner. And now as we hold the right mouse key, it should collect images. And we can give that kind of a test here. As you can see, they're in 640 by 640 format, and it collected some images here. Now, 
I'm not going to go through the process of actually collecting those in game. I'm just going to use some examples that I already have from in game to use to show you guys how to actually label them. Uh, you want to go to makesense.ai. It's actually a free online tool. It's open source um, and it's one of the easier ones to use. Uh, I actually provide a web model of YOLO V5 to actually help you label images faster at least for the games that we support if you go to amy it's right here it's the universal v3 web model of course i'll update this as i train new models um, but you can download this and you'll need to drag and drop all these files in to make sense and i'll show you that here in just a second so we're going to get started we're going to drag some images in We're going to create a label here real quick called enemy and then we're actually going to go up to actions run ai locally yolo v5 and then this is actually where we drag and drop our universal model in so i'm going to grab i'm going to grab that here real quick and dump it in here and then use model okay and now it's done so now as we go through our images, we should see some pre-detections like this one here. So it's detecting this person as an enemy, which is correct. So we'll click the plus button. And of course we want to adjust these just a slight bit because it's a little bit off. So you pretty much want to just keep going through images and looking around. Uh, obviously we don't want to highlight teammates. Teammates are not enemies, so we don't want to highlight them. And every once in a while, you'll come across one that doesn't have any detections, but also doesn't have the enemy highlighted. You'll need to highlight those yourself. And then we'll select the one label over here that we had. I did have someone ask me, what do you do if there is no one in the image? Well, if there's no one in the image, we don't want to label it, but we still want to include it in our training data. We refer to these as background images or negative images, and it helps the AI to know what not to aim at. Um, if you train an AI and you don't include any background images, oftentimes you're going to get false positives on background objects such as tires, uh, poles, ladders, street lamps are all the ones that I kind of got as I was training Amy. So, and even text, you can even get it on text. Um, so I would include all the images that you can, uh, even if they don't have an enemy inside of them. Once we're done labeling all of our images, we'll actually go up here to actions, export annotations, yellow, v, uh, yellow format, and export. What this will do is actually give us a folder with labels inside of it. And I'll pull that up here real quick. And each one of these has some data inside of it. So we have class of zero, which is enemy. And then here's the bouncing box or the boundary box of said player. And that's kind of how the AI knows where the person is at on the picture. So we'll take these because these are our labels. And we'll actually go down to our folder and into our universal model labels. And you actually want to split your data so obviously I don't have a ton of data here as I'm just doing an example, but they recommend a 70 to 30 split. So 70% training to 30% validation. So think of validation as the AI knowing this is 100% correct. You know, if, if I run through a training, how do I know that what I'm doing is correct? You know, if, if someone said, here, run through this obstacle course, you got 10 minutes. How do I know that I ran through that obstacle course the right way? You know, other than someone saying, you know, what you did was right or this was wrong. That's what the validation is there for. It's to help the AI know, okay, this is either right or this is either wrong. And it uses that data to kind of validate that what it, it, what it has is correct. So now that we dropped our labels inside of our training and inside of our validation, obviously you'll have more than this. Um, we want to actually add our images in so these should match image names and of course you want to put the correct labels in the correct folder so if i have them in the training folder 
you know, if I have these labels in the training folder, then my pictures that match these also need to go in the training folder. Um, if I don't, then it's just going to be considered a background image, and that would not be right. So you could then take your images. I'm just going to do an example again of going into images, training, and dumping them into here. And then let's say this was the one I put in validation. I'd move it over to validation. And that's kind of how your structure should be set up. You don't really have to be that selective of what you're going to put in training versus validation. I would just pick out a random count from your images. So like, so you have a thousand images, do 300 pictures as validation. Once you get all of your images and labels added to your folders, you could then start your training. This might take a slight bit of time, um, depending on how many images you have. I, I know for the universal model that has close to, to 14,000 right now, it actually takes about anywhere from three to six hours to complete. So as you can see here, it ran through its training 100%, and then it did a validation run. Uh, where it then validated that training against my validation data and then it moved on to the second training and then once this one completes it also do a validation run and if it's better than the first one then it will replace it as the best and we can actually see this progress in our runs detect what we named it and then under weights we have a best and last these will be quite large until the training finishes and then it does an optimization once it completely finishes and it realizes it's completely done. Um, there is a, a way to resume training if you needed to stop it and then redo it or resume it. Uh, you could do that, but it's highly recommended just to continue the training until it's complete. Like I said, once this is done, you can actually export it to Onyx and use it right in Amy. So, you can actually test your model right away once it's finished and export it to Onyx. If you have any other questions, let me know down in the comments. If you have any other issues with Amy or want some more information, you can always open up an issue. Or if you want to send us image data, you can open up an issue with that image data or do a merge uh, with your model or, or some code fixes if you find some bugs that you want to fix for Amy. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Like I said, we're, 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 uh, we don't make profit off of this project. So anything helps. Um, and we're just here to kind of show you what to do and how to do it. So I hope you guys enjoy. And I see you guys in the next one. Bye.